temporary. That they have dominated, Johnny. But maybe this time for Team Vitality, they can deny the three in a row for BDS. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I'm going to just uh, obviously predict BDS to win. I mean, we, we did earlier on in the show, going to reiterate for those who weren't there for the pre-show today. We're all expecting BDS to win. I don't know what on earth Kid, uh, I don't know what on earth Wade Punk's thinking. Um, Kid Up didn't want to play them, and that's probably a first in Kid Up's career. This guy's always wanted to play the best, but at this point, I think he's just sick of losing to BDS. Uh, but this is a, the best chance they're going to get. BDS have had a longer day than them, um, so if if there's ever a chance for Vitality to get one up on them in their current form, it is now. So Vitality coming in off a victory against God's Miller's team. But from Giants were the victims to BDS in the semi-finals. Which one would be able to get the better one here? Let's see, rematch of both our full and our winter uh, grand finals from the majors. So definitely a lot of history behind this. Unfortunately, history very much marked with BDS victories across these two. I tell you, would like to at least get this skirmish their way, but what an interception by Monkey Moon. Clears the ball. Alpha by, by himself. Yeah, it's a good clear by uh, by Alpha as well. He's bought a lot of time there um, for uh, Fairy and Kate up to retreat. And that was a heavy hit for Monkey Man, so well done for Alpha to even be back uh, far enough to catch it. That's really what Vitality have to do today. They just have to perfectly find that gap where they can, you know, take the, the necessary risks that you have to take against BDS without going too far. Now, Vitality having a bit of a team meeting here. I don't think it's gone well. Oh my goodness, they're looking for the tactical pause, it seems. Fortunately, a huddle at your near post doesn't get a lot done in Rocket League. And break, Monkey Moon. <laughs> putting it in for number one. Oh, dearie me, Vitality caught out for the first goal of the series. I think many people at home will be thinking that Vitality, if they are going to take this, they've got to run um, like a wave of momentum throughout this game. That's pretty much the only way that we've seen most people able to take on BDS. Extra, not gonna get back though. Well, you can see the aim coming in afterwards. I'm fairly certain that's exactly what Alpha saw as he went for this shot. Maybe this is the play that uh, Kato up and Alpha were discussing at the near post <laughs> moments ago. Said, right Alpha, just run down the middle. I'll, I'll launch it there for you. So it worked out eventually, um, even though if it is isn't unconventional. That's a, a great counter by um, by Alpha. Just following up on KDOP's clear. You can always expect those clears to go pretty hard down the middle in these uh, kind of games. So it's a good place to be making that forward run towards. Now here comes Fairy and KDOP, intercepted by Extra. Alpha's got to be careful here. Doesn't want to give BDS the free counter uh, that they're always looking for. Yeah, it's always step one when you're up against BDS. Uh, if we knew what steps two and beyond were, I think a lot more teams might have had an opportunity to beat them. But step one has always been get the hard clear sorted because if you lose that, they gain complete control of the field. Now off the backboard, in comes Extras, does miss it. Ooh. Monkey Moon won't be quite so kind. Oh wow, I wonder if this was an intended miss. I don't think it was. I think Extra is going for this, but at some point during this aerial, he realized that he wasn't making good contact with the ball, leaned away from it, and Monkey Moon, who had a far better angle, had the space to go for it because all eyes were on Extra, who was already up in the air. So. You know, although a play looks like it may have started off um, just uh, by accident there, they definitely made the most of it. BDS ahead again. Rocket League is all about making opportunity through chaos. It doesn't matter if it's your own mistake. It's whether or not you're the team that responds to it best. Monkey Moon now drops it to Mark by A. Alpha reaches it early. k wants a pinch of his own. Not going to quite set up for him. It'd be nice to get a second one of those today. Now Monkey Moon. Try to put the ball behind Kalop, see if he can cause a little bit of communication chaos. And the power clear game does seem to be edging towards Team BDS. Not the best play there from Monkey Moon, but he did add enough height to it that it's very difficult to collect for Kalop. Well down, Monkey Moon will leave. Kalop up again. When does Fairy want to go in? He's now started to reach it off the backboard. Marked by eight already there. I'd got to agree with what you said. It's a it's a meta. It's a kind of gameplay that favors BDS. Whenever someone goes into just a hard hitting slugfest against them, you need a bit of finesse against BDS. And I think it was that trickery and the slow plays from Vitality when they picked their battles intelligently in the Fall Major Grand Final uh, that they were able to go pretty much show to toe with BDS. Just to, you know losing that series by a hair. But uh, yeah, today's been pretty 
focused on the hard clears early on. It's not unusual to see a game one like this, but I'd be surprised if Vitality do this during this whole series. Well, this is also exactly what they did during the Winter Major Finals. We discussed how Alpha looked almost subdued in that one. Like, there were so many occasions he wanted to go for the individual play, and it looked like he was just being told, no, don't. We need to stay with this. We need to stick with it. And it looks like Vitality want to try and implement it yet again. The only issue that they had last time is that they can tell Alpha not to go for the individual plays. He's still going to go for them on occasion and did find himself on a few times getting dunked. 30 seconds left. Mark by eight. Wants to try and get his team the game-winning goal. Oh. That's not a good pinch for them now. Off the backboard. Oh. It's an awkward bounce. An extra will get there first. Oh, well, that was so close in Vitality where the team just hoping that that goes on target. A very risky challenge from BDS perspective. Extra all alone in defense. Monkey Moon's there to rescue him, but it was all extra. Keeping the ball at, in a safe location until Monkey Moon could get back. Vitality has one last chance in game one. And it's up in the air, but it's denied by Monkey Moon. The speed for BDS, surely going to get this one won. And it is just into the ground. Mark by eight has the composure to just let it be. And it was a respectable effort at the end there from Vitality. Very peak pre-jumped. The opportunity to try and reach the pass is just... BDS only had to try and cover one angle, and the cover is exactly what they managed to do. So, starting off, I'm sure how quite a few people were expecting, but for Team Vitality, it does look like the intention is to build upon what they learned during the previous major. Uh, but what we've learned again is when it comes to BDS, when it comes to Monkey Moon, life's difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult to hang with these guys. I'll, I, I, I'll actually just. Uh, put it out there that I think BDS might have even improved. This is pretty ridiculous to mm. think of. The team who are already confirmed for Worlds, uh, they're already leading the entire region by a landslide, and they look like they've gotten even better. I mean, the mechanics have, have never looked cleaner, um, and the speed is definitely up there with some of their best performances. But the, the ball pressure that BDS have been able to produce today is second to none. On the recoveries, look out for all of them to pressure the ball from the blind side of the player who's uh, either carrying it or making a play on it. And that's making it very difficult for anything to uh, get going in Vitality's end. It does make it harder for BDS to communicate who's going for what. So you've got players backing up behind the ball and players coming from the other side of it. Um, but so far, they're doing it extremely well. And I think Vitality uh, might have to adapt around that. Monkey Moon looks for the tight angle. He almost got it extra. Slow wow. rolling short and torturously for Vitality. They'll be forced to watch that one go in. Yeah, Alpha committed very late to this one. Probably um, would have helped KDOP a lot if Alpha had just jumped up and challenged Monkey Moon earlier so that KDOP can see a bit sooner exactly what's going to happen in this play. But it's another one of those positions for BDS where they're just the faster team to capitalize. The ball falls down onto the goal line, and extra is there before the, K uh, before the Vitality defense arrived, as it was uh, KDOP just beaten to the punch there. And we have to think, you know, back to your point about how BDS seems to have improved. The main criticism about them when we got started off this season was, yeah, they're good, but sometimes they start a little bit slowly. Yeah. I don't think that's something you can say about them anymore. Not today, certainly. They've looked great from the beginning of every single series that they've played. But it's just, a, it's really inspiring to see a team stay at the top and, well, already be at the top and then continue to put those hours in, put the work in, mm -hmm. and reap the rewards. I mean, these guys have been the best since the start of this season over in North America. We've had, you know, best in the region change hands th probably three or four times. But uh, BDS throughout that entire time have been number one in EU. And it's fully deserved. The work that these guys put in, it really does show. They are a championship all to themselves. So he's going to drop straight down. A bit of chaos, a bit of pandemonium. That's one that Vitalio is going to get territory for, if not possession of the ball. An extra glides his way through a couple of challenges. But Vitalio, they won't want to give this up. Still very low boost. Alpha forced to try and set. Double commit from BDS doesn't tend to hurt them too much, as they've always got that third player around just to cover their tracks. Here comes Alpha. Looks for the first time shot. Another double commit. BDS are going to keep doing this. They have to make sure that the hits remain clean. Can't give anything for free over to Renault Vitality. Or just Vitality now, actually, aren't they? As, uh, it's over to the corner. KDOP moves in. Hasn't really got anyone around. I think this is an issue right now, is that Vitality 
They're setting up, but they've got people ready to follow up the clear from BDS. They haven't got anyone to set up if the move actually works. Yeah, it's very difficult to get the ball past BDS like this because uh, throughout this entire exchange, BDS are doing fine on boost. They're in trouble here though. Oh, oh! just a scramble saved by Mark by A. And that's the difference. They're able to get someone into that near post position to challenge where Vitality were not able to block the same shot at the other end of the field. It's that boost management from BDS. They're not slowing down, even though they're stuck in the final third. Um, if they do that to another team, the boost has disappeared and they get scored on momentarily afterwards. But it really is just impressive what BDS are able to do, the speed they're able to play at, even when they're pressed back like this. And Extra takes his time, knows that he's got to draw Alpha in, and that's exactly what he's managed to do. Well, towards the backboard, rare time that the backboard isn't immediately covered. k still putting the pressure <laughs> on. And Monkey Moon, casual as you like, gets a pinch clear, because of course he does. Oh, that should be a chance, but... Very peak will get it away. 100 seconds left here. BDS on the verge of getting half the job done. Oh... Adops just missed. That was a glorious opportunity. BDS did not have ball pressure there. They needed to get something with that play. Now they've got to just knock the ball into an awkward position and see if anything happens with it. Because whenever you try and race BDS to the ball, you're playing it, you're fighting a losing battle. Vitality are forced into that battle very often in this matchup. Well, what a bitch up underneath the defense. What a way to open the scoring for them in game two. He gets Kane up out of the way. <laughs> nah, mate, this is mine. I've got the plan. And for all the wow. plaudits Alpha gets for being able to take the ball into the air, double reset, triple reset, backboard double tap. That was making full contact with the ground and slamming the ball in. Yeah, it really did come out of nowhere as well. BDS fighting right back. It's almost on target. From a Deflection near the ceiling. Monkeyman stolen the boost, comes back around for the ceiling shot. It's a slow one. Fairy Peak gladly sends it into the BDS app once again. BDS brought to a standstill just briefly here, but they're waiting for that opportunity to present itself. There it is. Extra takes it. Vitality's near post defense has crumbled again. See, Kenop's gone past it, but Alpha oh, just leaves. Alpha. That is sloppy and careless by Alpha. And they've just handed it straight back over oh, to BDS. Yeah. And you can see the idea there. He's probably called in comms that he's going to go for the boost and he wants his goalkeeper to come out and take the ball. What he doesn't realize is his goalkeeper is getting beaten to the ball. If he leaves this, Alpha just getting baited into the boost like a moth to a lamp. And just like that, the lead is back in BDS hands. Really an amateur mistake there for a player of Alpha's caliber. He should know better than to leave the ball in positions like that. Kadop looks to try and get it back over to Alpha. He's ended up missing it. A couple of sloppy mistakes here. More whiffs than we are used to seeing out of Vitality. That infield pass isn't going to get them anything. Extra would sure be more than happy to claim the hat trick. There's just nothing around for Vitality. They've got to get the ball going. They're not going to do so. BDS storming towards another regional. But they have just looked so good from the start of every series they've played today. And it's like you said earlier, they've been criticized for starting slowly. I think that's what's mainly led to them having the most ridiculous comeback stat that we've ever seen in Rocket League, winning, I think, 93 or 94% of their games, of their series, sorry, where they lose the first game, which is wildly different from the average, uh, which swings heavily in the uh, in the other direction. But uh, now they're not starting slow. They have come out the gate, playing their A game, um, and despite already qualifying for Worlds, they don't seem interested in losing any regionals. This would be the first time in RLCSX where they win three events in a row. They won the, the third regional in winter. They won the winter major. Now they're trying to start off spring with yet another win. BDS are it's record ridiculous. breakers. It's, uh, it's, it's just, it's insane. Every time they play, they break a record and uh, we're watching one right now. I'm sure it's one of those things, especially for those of you at home where you won't appreciate them now, but a couple of years from now, you'll be a brand new team out there and you'll turn around and say, well, they weren't as good as my team when I was watching. They weren't as good as BDS. BDS won everything. I'll tell you one player that has probably got a team that he would like to name as being better than BDS, and that is KDOP. 
Oh, yeah. and, uh, right now, this is his chance, you know, his destiny, his own position as being a part of the greatest team of all time. It's in his hands. He is it direct is, yeah. competition to this team. Yeah, he, he can, like you said, remove uh, BDS from that conversation. I would agree right now that uh, that Gale Force Signitas team, Panda Turbo k -Dop, did just, I think, more than BDS have up until now. We'll have to wait till the end of the season to see if BDS uh, can continue this reign of domination. But um, BDS have definitely got the potential to be the all-time greats. And that's definitely something that I don't think k -Dop's ready to say goodbye to just yet. Of course, Panda's still in the region to have something to say about it as well. Not that they've had any more luck against BDS. Come on, Turbo's probably watching this thinking, come on, guys, can somebody beat them? I'm the GOAT, I want somebody to beat these guys or else uh, that might change. You, we both know Turbo is out there somewhere just saying, yeah, it was all me. It wasn't a bad team, it was me. <laughs> we all knew it. Right now, BDS looking like a shoe in but oh! off the crossbar from Alpha and it's another one. Alpha's had a couple of costly mistakes here. And you know, he's, he's trying to just do the absolute most that he can there. That's what happens when you play against BDS. You try to, you know, shoot a 90% safe shot um, because you don't want to, uh, you know, take the risk of getting your shot saved. And then you hit the bar. So it's just, they're being pushed to the limit here, Vitality. And they, you know, they have played well under this kind of pressure in the past, but to do it again and again, it just shows you what kind of team BDS are. They, I mean, we're actually watching the standard B set that all future RLCSX teams will be compared to. This is it. Um, and long may it continue. I mean, the the, uh, the guys you're watching the field here, they deserve this for uh, the work they put in and the success that they're having. That being said, these last two games have at least been within a goal. Vitality will probably be feeling that it was their own mistakes that led to those losses. It's the backboard. Here comes Kadop. Was always going to at least get some contact. Wow. Kadop with another chance to block. Alpha not going to be able to cover that angle. Has to play it back over to Fairy. He's going to at least try and follow. Can't find any quick blocking angle. But oh, there's oh, a oh, wipe out. If you can't get a dunk on the ball, you might as well dunk a player. Huge play by Fairy Peak. Wave dash bump onto Extra. And not a moment too late. The ball was almost um, in position for Extra to knock away. Fairy Peak wave dashes to get the momentum and then beats the ball to Extra. And often you're going to be uh, you know, racing the ball to a player, but that's exactly what Fairy Peak was doing there. Poor Extra, I think you got whiplash from that one. That was far too quick, far too brilliant from Fairy Peak. Now they're going to look to try and continue it. A one goal lead, definitely not safe. Up against these opponents. Boom and clear. Monkey Moon wants to get there before Fairy Peak can. Two minutes left. Alpha just gonna delay a bit of time. Get that flip reset. Couldn't quite control it after. Now Monkey Moon on the break. He is up against Kadop. It's gonna be a momentary 1v1. Fairy Peak now back. Yeah, yeah, no boost. Join him as well. Monkey Moon would have had this uh, first touch. If he had any boost to work with there, he could have set himself up for a shot, but having absolutely none. Oh, oh that's it, Fairy Peak! <laughs> we'll take it. Vitality are going to take it. Speaking about dunks earlier, that's Fairy Peak's second dunk in the game. This led into a goal. Wow. I like <laughs> I mean, this. How about that for a, for a final destination? Top left corner off the ceiling bounce. Fairy Peak puts them two ahead. Vitality have almost abandoned the idea that they can outpace this team. They're almost using the fact that they're slightly slower to their own advantage. Monkey Moon off the backboard. Slight miss from Alpha over to Mach by 8. He's not going to quite be able to reach it. But Vitality, have, you know, they know that they're not going to win these races, but they can get the blocks. And this yeah. game, they are fully committed to the idea of predicting where BDS want to put the ball. And it's working out fantastically. And this is something we saw from them in the Winter Major as well. The 50-50 game, if, you know, I, I think it might have been in Vitality's favor, but definitely close to even between these two teams. And that's something Vitality can utilize. They want to use their mastery of the 50-50s, the challenges, uh, to just stop BDS short without even having to worry about interceptions. Just take the challenge. Uh, try and manipulate the bounce in their favor. Fairy Peak's always been someone who's known for that. His uh, theory is to win 50-50s, just try not to lose them. Don't really think too hard about winning. Just try not to lose. Um, that's how he does it. I think I would definitely describe that second goal as a win. 
You know, Fairy, you, you certainly didn't lose that. 20 seconds left. BDS need a goal, and they need it now. They want to remain on track for a potential sweep, but it does look like that chance has got beyond them. Alpha is going to buy that time. If there's any player you want on the ball with very little time remaining, it's the player is going to kill off a lot of time from the clock. k Oh, he's actually oh. Ended up missing it. Nobody there for the follow-up, which means <laughs> no chance for the kickoff. Vitality have found an answer. And Johnny, unlike usual when we see BDS drop a game, this looks like a playstyle they can do again. Yeah, this is really controlled by Vitality compared to uh, the previous two games where they were giving BDS opportunities to accelerate and to break out of defense. This was a lot more containing uh, from Vitality. They were just making sure to never really give BDS any opportunities. Um, and it all, I think even then BDS had a, had a couple. There was this one uh, chance, of course, where Monkey Moon was on the dribble, had absolutely no boost. If he had even 12, I think he's going to set up a, a vicious ground shot there. Um, and even at the end, we see them hit the bar again, but it wasn't meant to be. Vitality get one on the board, and it's expected these days that, you know, BDS should not be sweeping Vitality. Fair enough, they're, they're supposed to be beating them, but sweeping, I mean, that's a bit too much. So good news for Vitality, this isn't going to be a sweep. Now they're going to try and make it into an even series. Absolutely so. As for Team Vitality, they'll like what they saw there. A lot of off-the-ball play happening immediately after the challenges. Fairy Peak especially deserving a lot of credit for his role in getting them their first game. Now they've got to do it three more times. We get ourselves into match number four. Monkey Moon's going to start off over in the corner. Pass the ball over to Mark by eight. This is what BDS is so good at. Just making sure they always get something. Put the ball where you don't want it to be. Just wait to see the mistakes. Oh my. That was a little bit close. I mean, that's just confidence from Monkey Moon as he takes the ball all the way across his own box and then up the wall, knocks it clear. Okay, oh, no, but the fake Monkey Moon's got it covered. It's really smart by K-Dog not to get a heavy touch on that ball. A glancing blow or a complete miss are actually favorable um, compared to a heavy hit because it's got that mind game, that surprise factor. Very peak. Doesn't want to give BDS any acceleration on this ball. You notice there he's fading away from the 50-50. He's trying to keep the ball in this half. And Alpha doing likewise. The suppression that Vitality are able to apply here. It really is limiting BDS in the counter-attack. There's an interesting little meta game developing here as well, because whilst we saw Fairy Peak after the, the well, for the first goal, you know, taking the ball challenge and then taking out the goalkeeper, Vitalia going for it more and more here. We've seen two or three times to start us off. Just sticking around. Hey, Fairy Peak's already doing it here. And it's going to put a lot of pressure on that third man. There's a, a good chance that BDS are going to get chances to break away. And it probably will lead to a couple of 2v1s, but it seems like it's a risk Vitalia are willing to take. And why not? You know, we, we've seen regular rotation doesn't tend to work against this team. Take those risks. Find yourself a new angle that can maybe work out. Here comes K-Dop, looks for the show. And if you wanted anyone to take it, K-Dop was that man. Beautiful technique from K-Dop on that one. So look at this, hardly any angle on the run up, but he's still able to loft that ball high and fast into the net. And really anyone who's tried to shoot a half volley while you've got a straight on run up, you'll know how difficult it is to get a high, fast arcing shot like this. Perfect technique from KDOP. Catches two defenders by surprise. Vitality still on the comeback trail. And still, they've actually managed to hold BDS to low goals these last few games. Nothing scored in the last one, nothing scored so far in this one. Marked by eight, looks for Monkey Moon. It's a quick challenge from Fairy Peak. Didn't get too much on it as k is taken out and Monkey Moon had to find something. He needed to get that ball to extra. Play has gone for them now and Vitality have reset. Yeah, Vitality just have to be careful here. This is exactly what they wanted. They got a nice lead um, in, a, in a matchup that already looks like it's leveled out. BDS had a clear advantage early on, faster out right the gates and uh, definitely I think just out pressuring Vitality when it came to um, how much they were able to do while they're rotating um, away from the play. Now Vitality have just decided we're not going to go for um, you know fast plays. We're not going to try and boost starve them um, and get the ball past them. They're playing a bit more of those demos on the ground. They're trying to look for those um, those finesse plays where they can get the shots or the flicks off. 50 is going a bit more strongly for them as well. But this is where BDS are always going to be dangerous. And Monkey Moon lines up a zoom around a shot and Fairy Peak actually saves with a free jump. Great read by Fairy, because Monkey Moon from that kind of range is deadly. 
Fairy Pete just knows everything at this point. He can see anything coming as Extra's got the miss off the top of the goal. Oh, and man. Extra has got away with one. Oh, Monkey yeah. Moon now on the breakaway. He's also got support. Good block. What? The block could go anywhere, though. Who's going to be the first what? to it? Mark by it looks to turn. Kane up on the break. <laughs> Who's going to get to it? It will be cleared one more time. Neither team able to score. We stay at 1-0. Oh, that's brilliant. So Monkey Moon actually gave up on rotating in that play because he thought Kane up was just scoring an open net. But then the call came through that there was actually a save, so he started rotating again. But... I still think he expected it after uh, committing so hard for a goal and missing. Monkey Moon flip reset, not on target again. Fairy Peak saves. Vitality are defending so well here, but can BDS find a way through? Nobody's at the back post to challenge that shot. Extra gets it for free, but Alpha's there to save it. I don't know how we're at 1 0, but that's the Sweet. state of the game right now. And I'm sure both teams will be looking back at chances missed and potentially ruining them, but only one team right now will be more upset than the other, and that is BDS. Need to get themselves an extra chance. Might drop to them here. Off the wall, Fairy Peak looks to get to it before Monkey Moon. Just a challenge that he will succeed in. What a response this has been from Vitality. Monkey Moon won't be able to get a second touch, but Vitaly just needs to hold them off for 30 more seconds. Alpha and Kadop burning some time off the clock, maybe kick, pick themselves up. Second goal. Repeat to the backboards. Extra has missed it. And for BDS, we were discussing earlier on about how Vitality were missing a whole bunch of the ball. BDS have been just as guilty of it so far. Very peak. Just finds the challenge. A lot of work to do here for BDS. Kalop gets to it first, wasn't challenged. Gonna be a chance here for Mark by 8, and he will scoop the ball up. Fairy Peak there first, okay. he's far too quick, and Vitality have wow. got us tied up to each. Oh, I think you said it best halfway through this game. I don't know how it's at 1-0, and it finishes 1-0. I still don't know exactly how that happened. Uh, both teams had huge chances, but uh, Vitality are doing exactly what they need to do now. They're not getting drawn into these uh, kind of positions that BDS want this series to be decided in. They want this series to be decided in, okay, who's faster? Who's uh, got the cleaner recoveries? Um, who's got the more aggressive rotation? But that's not what Vitality want. That's not something that favors them. I think the, this, the moments where they're able to slow the game down and get these positions for ground shots like that one from KDOP, bump, it, bump plays like the one in the previous game from Fairy Peak, um, and even the little mind games and the fake challenges of uh, Vitality are starting to incorporate. They're all kind of breaking up the BDS flow state very well, and they're making this awkward for BDS. Now, if they can keep this up, they're in with a great chance of winning this, but it's, it's easier said than done, as evidenced by how close the last game was to not being 1-0. And I really thought Vitality should have burned their timeout after game two. I, maybe there's not even to me that BDS should have burnt theirs after the last one, but mm. both of them... Yeah. have decided to hold on to it for now. As we head into the final three potential games of this series. It's not really very BDS, is it, to call for a timeout? These I, guys think don't... I think it's an ego yeah. thing for both teams. It's like, you, you, <laughs> no, there's no way. It, it, to admit they're being better than us right now. Come on. Uh, yeah, you know, BDS timeout, what for? You know, they, <laughs> these guys don't slow down. Uh, and, and like, well, they haven't slowed down since the fall split regional one has started. They've been in top gear since then. Nice flick by Alpha. He's going to be demoed on the exit by Mark by eight. And that kind of pressure on the rotation is huge from Mark, really uh, bailing his goalkeeper out of a very difficult position uh, by just sniping the player who's dribbling from behind. Again, Alpha looking for that goalkeeper. Third man of BDS needs to be on his toes at all times. They are very much marked men as Monkey Moon. Oh my oh. goodness. Watch in awe. Watch in astoundment. Watch Monkey Moon do what he does best. Yeah, you just don't get any easier than that. Monkey Moon um, making a very difficult shot look completely effortless. And Vitality have been caught on that counter. The pass down the line was exactly what Monkey Moon wanted. Uh, you know, when you've got a player like Monkey Man on your team, you can hit the ball as hard as you like at him. He's going to do something with it. Oh, Kadop almost set a lineup for that shot, but he got there a bit early. Like that again, it's the pressure of playing against BDS, but Alpha's got one through. And again, they have capitalized on one of these plays where Fairy Peak's able to dunk on someone. I mean, this guy, every time he dunks on someone, Vitality get a goal. So, more of that 
for Vitality fans. You know what? If you're on the wall and you see Vitality coming towards you, get rid. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter where. Just find a way to not <laughs> take it. Scramble to the ceiling. Find the highest angle you can. Just don't want to take him on in a 50-50. Again, I'm loving... I'm not going to call it a lack of respect, but I'm going, to, I'm going to say confidence that we're seeing from Vitality. They are launching players. Again, they had a player, you know, just jump into the air. Didn't quite know if they were going to make contact, but it forced BDS to react late because they have to respect that. Hey, Caleb's up in the air right now. He could redirect this. Oh, extra versus Fairy Peak. That's probably the player that Vitality wanted. Yeah, Fairy Peak just the king of 50-50s in this uh, series, it seems. Dominating every single one of them. And now Alpha does likewise. Monkey Man and Mark are both in the net for this, but Extra is going to waste time by attacking. He's just going to keep the ball on Vitality's back wall. I mean, it's one way to let your teammates retreat, is uh, put the ball as far away from your goal as possible. End-to-end -end kind of gameplay right now tends to favor BDS. Vitality have got to try and control uh, this ball. They've got to try and slow this down a little bit, make it awkward. That's where they've been succeeding in this series. I think most of this game favors BDS up until the point that Fairy decides, I'm going to jump and try and block this. And then for like that split second, it's like a 90-10 game for Vitality. Yeah. That's when you know you're in trouble. Fairy Peak's committing to a challenge. <laughs> He's not faking. He's actually just going for the ball. We actually had a double boost deal attempt there. Alpha and Fairy Peak are going to be sad to realize that only one of them can take that. But, you know, they've realized one thing that will help them against uh, BDS is uh, trying to get those boost deals. Makes demos easier. Um, gives you just a few seconds where you can probably take a small advantage in the midfield. Huge demo by Mark. Extra is throwing goal here and he dunks it over K-Dop. BDS ahead by two. For Extra, this was just a walk forwards for him. Alpha wiped out. And we'll win the challenge after the fact. So Vitality work to do now with a minute and 53 on the clock. They've had opportunities so far, but they do not want to be facing up against, what would that be, three match points? Four oh, BDS? It'll be two. Two, because uh, yes. three minus uh, one is two. <laughs> we already know I how my really, cast really, works. Oh, wow! What <laughs> oh, a shot, K-Dop snipes another top corner. I feel like the goal explosion really does uh, go perfectly with this goal. I love that gold explosion in general. I feel like the newest releases that we've had have been outstanding. Also appreciate the two demos that we got. That was just fantastic. So two each. Vitality, they've been stung a few times, but have managed to answer back each and every time. And again, there's one more bit in that Vitality Arsenal that they can still look towards as we do see a play off the backboard. k going to need to try and double it. But we've seen Kalop score. Oh, Monkey Moon. He's found his way through. <laughs> Silky smooth. That's just a clean catch for Monkey Moon. Um, and the pre-jump coming in from Vitality's last man. Uh, was it just a little bit too high? Of course, if you're going to go for a pre-jump and anticipate a shot there, you want to be at least be low enough that if Monkey Moon catches the ball, you still clip it. So just a, a small margin on the wrong side there for uh, Vitality. And they're behind again. Um, I was going to say earlier, Shogun, this is probably the one day I can't make fun of your caster math. I did, uh, in fact, get it wrong myself earlier, so you're, you're in good company. As now Vitality batter the backboard and the post, but Mark's got time. Alpha surprises him with an early challenge while completely isolated. Very sneaky by Alpha there. Usually, the play there would be to back off, because um, you're all alone, but he knows that's what Mark's expecting, so he doesn't do it. Monkey mode. Underneath, over the top of Alpha, but couldn't quite get the contact he needed. Now Vitality, desperate to scramble the ball away from their side of the field. Fairy Peak, no boost. Also, no fear. Look to try and take out Monkey Moon. Over in the corner, this is where they've done their best work so far. Running out of time now. Big clear from Mark by eight. That puts Vitality all the way back at square one. Yeah, Fairy Peak trying the back post approach there. I like the idea, but uh, the pass was just a bit too close to the near post for him to reach in time. And composure again for BDS in the back corner. Monkey Moon just skips the ball past everybody, and it might even be in. K-Dop in a rough position, does get the ball into the air. Alpha trying to do the same, but it's clipped the ground. That's a bit unlucky for him. Just like that, BDS are just one game away 
from winning their third event in a row, third RLCSX event in a row for the first time. It's been, you know, two on, one off for them up until now. And Monkey Moon was a little bit quieter during the major. This one, certainly not. Two goals for him. He is all over the place. And even defensively, he is rock solid for BDS. No mistakes from him so far, especially not in game number five. What a prediction from here, Johnny. Do we see Vitality hit the uh, the timeout button or do they just want to keep this going here? I mean, if, if, if I was Vitality, I'd definitely want to hit the timeout here. Just take a minute extra to discuss what exactly uh, just the small changes you want to make. So you don't want to change a lot here. This is such a close matchup, and you know, two of the last three games have gone to Vitality, so uh, things aren't going terribly for them. But as well to just try and get rid of that momentum that BDS have just got from the one game, take away everything from them. They decide not to. I mean, I guess they're just eager to get back into the game. Um, which, given the, how close the last game was, and yeah. uh, the fact that Vitality have definitely turned the series into close matchup where his first two games didn't indicate maybe maybe the second game more so but first game of the series did not look uh, all that close compared to what we're used to seeing from these two teams well, all of Vitaly's losses so far have only been by a single goal they feel like they've got the answer they just need to apply it we've got to do it two times in a row here we've got to win here and then send us over to Champions Field this might not be the perfect start though double commit and Fairy Peak will clean up Looking for that block one more time. I feel like there's just alarms going off for BDS every single time they see Fairy Peak in that side of the field. Now for the backboard, Alpha. Couldn't find the angle. Well, Drop down. Oh, it's a Fairy. Almost managed to just skid it underneath the players. Yeah, it was a very good pass. It looked like he was going to shoot up until the very last second there. So it's a difficult one for BDS to react to, or at least to preempt. But they did get the uh, save on the eventual shot anyway. Fairy Peak actually getting on the wrong end of a 50-50 here and it's deflected in. Monkey Moon's got the credit. But for once, Fairy Peak comes out second best in a challenge. He tried so hard. He could see Mark by eight coming towards him, oh but he couldn't quite my. find the angle. And yeah, it's all it falling apart on Vitality. I think Alpha might have had that, but K-Dop, in his attempt to flip in the way of the shot, has knocked it into the bottom right corner. There's not a lot that he can do about that, of course, but still unfortunate for Vitality as uh, Alpha may have actually had the exact shot that Monkey Moon hit covered. Alpha, gonna have to go all the way by himself. Couldn't find the follow-up block. A fairy peak to a pre-jumping K-Dop. Can continue, but is that a boost? We needed a very favorable bounce. Alpha's hit, sort of just buying for time for both teams. I tell you, I've got good pressure since the restart, but these touches need to be sorted out. They're getting in such a good spot, and they're just handing it over. I'm surprised BDS haven't escaped yet. I think it's just one of those games for KDOP where everywhere he looks, there's no boost anywhere to be seen. He did grab 100 as he left the BDS half there, but um, I've seen several times he's flipping around, just trying to get a supersonic, or he'd definitely be using boost if he had it. There we go, another boost seal of the same boost, actually. KDOP's got a good timer on that one. Finally able to play at the pace oh, and he goes, yes, play up, but Alpha's crept forward. Monkey Moon saw it happen. And two goals for Monkey Moon, two goals for BDS. It's a bit too far forward there from Alpha 54. Pressure's gotten to him once again. And Monkey Moon's instincts have been phenomenal in this game. He has spotted every single mistake. There is nothing that has gone unpunished. Oh, good challenge oh. as well as <laughs> Hidop will finally get there. Vitality, you know, this is looking like a bad situation. No one's going to try and sugarcoat that. They have a while, got to try and stop the bleeding, sort themselves out, and give themselves a chance to send us to game seven. Yeah, they absolutely cannot afford to concede another goal. I don't think uh, even the most bravest uh, viewers would be predicting a three goal comeback with this kind of time remaining. Well, that's oh, what wow. you're going to need to predict if Vitality win this, because Extra slots in a double touch, and it's all too easy for him. There's no Vitality defense to be seen. I think uh, K-Dop again is looking for boost. It's never been there in the Vitality app for him to take, so he goes off to midfield to get it at the worst time. And that could very well do it. EDS. Um, I have a <laughs> challenge on their hands. Okay. Okay, let's take another um, closer look at this. Monkey Moon. Oh, he's tripped on the goalpost. <laughs> he wanted to wait for this one, but 
Um, I don't think he exactly realized where the post was. Drives into it, turns sideways, gets a bit disorientated, and it has bounced in. I mean, either that, that's one explanation for what happened. The other is that we've somehow been teleported to a bronze lobby, but it looks like we're back in Neo Tokyo in the EU regional finals now. So all is well. Well, they've at least got themselves back into a position they can work with with Vitality. And there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Trying so hard. <laughs> Trying so hard for all the Vitality fans. Get the hope, and then just another extra slow roller. 39 kph. No mercy being shown to the ball there by extra on that one. But oh dear, Vitality putting up their worst defensive display by a landslide in this game. And what a shame because they fought back bravely here. Two games down after two games played. Equalizes and. Did not play badly in the last game, but neither been made to look silly as BDS tried to put more and more goals past them and improve their grand finals record once again. They're already perfect on that. They've never lost a best of seven in a grand final in any RLCS X event. This is going to be another one. And uh, we spoke on day one, Johnny. You sort of laughed about it, how I said, well, they've never won three in tournaments in a row. Oh, what a save. That looks like it's it about is. to change. They are it about to do. Does. What is this? Only two events that they've lost all season? Yep, they're about to win their seventh, no, sorry. Yeah, their seventh event uh, out of nine. So, wow. That's quite a good win percentage. Uh, quite a good record, you could say. Mm, could be better, but. Well, yeah, they could be two better, but. Yeah. When you've got seven, I think you're probably going to be quite happy with it. I mean, the, the prize money continues to line their pockets. And again, they don't need to be playing this well right now. We've spoken about it over and over again. They're good. They're good. They could, they could literally take a ho they could take a holiday, you know, uh, continue being at home uh, during this global pandemic, but uh, without having to grind Rocket League. And they're not interested in that because every single one of these events, besides being uh, full of RLCSX uh, circuit points, has a ton of prize money in the line. Every single regional, $100,000. And BDS are taking the majority off it. They're taking this one as well. Nothing Vitality can do to stop the inevitable. And uh, they can't really blame themselves for this game because this one had mistakes early in it, made it making them li making their lives difficult on themselves. Uh, but BDS have been outstanding all weekend. I think they've been the best team all weekend, quite clearly. As you mentioned, everyone, they got better this weekend. Yeah. As terrifying as that is for every team out there. We've got all of our battles for top six. We can even have a bottle battle for top two. But there is only one team when yeah. it is top one. BDS are the best team in the European region. They will need to wait for us to eventually get to live events to prove just where they stand in the history of Rocket League. But for now, they are the man. It's just ridiculous. If BDS were allowed to split their RLCSX points that they've accumulated so far between the three of them and all just go their separate ways and start new teams, all three of those teams would be in the running for Worlds. All three, because they have enough points to qualify twice now already. I think if you, yeah, if they cut their points in half, they'd still be third. <laughs> they could start loading they, some of these points third. out. Oh, well, I think they'd be fourth to be exact, but oh my goodness, BDS are just something else. I mean, this is just incredible, um, you know, some people want to see a team step up and beat them. And, so do uh, we. Yeah, You've got to be that quality. I look You've forward got to, be that to that level. day. I look forward to that day. But the longer, to, the more days go by without that happening, the more special that day is going to be when it comes. And uh, I'm sure uh, every RLCS and every Rocket League fan is looking forward to it. But in the meantime, let's just enjoy this ridiculous, ridiculous run that BDS are on. So win number seven championship number seven for BDS across the season. We've got no more words to talk about just how good they are, but the good news is Leaf and the lads do.